Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is Library Commission's weekly online event where we cover various Library Commission or just library related activities and library topics in Nebraska. Um, we have uh, Commission staff that do these presentations. We bring in guest speakers sometimes. We do this every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. It's a one hour session. It's free to attend and we do record the session so that you can watch um, and listen to them if you're not available to attend the live session. This morning we have Laura Johnson here who's going to tell us um, all about Moodle and how the Commission has been using that. Hi, there we go. Hi, this is Laura. Um, we're going to talk today about Moodle and what we've been doing with it here at the Commission. Um, we're starting out by saying, do you Moodle? Um, the Moodle community <laughs> is um, a very active one. And um, they're so let's get going. Um, are you right handed or left? Left. Okay, but this is the button. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oops, I went ahead too far. No, that's it. That's the. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, so let's issues. start by what is Moodle? Uh, Moodle originally stood for Modular Object Oriented Dynamic Learning Environment, um, but now it's just a name. Uh, they just they say that Moodle doesn't really stand for anything anymore. Uh, what is Moodle? Moodle's learning management software. It's like Blackboard or Angel. Those are the programs that most people seem to have used. It turns out there's a lot of different learning software, uh, learning management programs out there. Uh, Moodle is open source, so it is initially free, although as Michael's fond of saying, it's free like free kittens, not free like free beer. <laughs> um, we, we can add to it or modify it if we want to. Um, Moodle was created by Martin, and I think it's Doogie Amos, I'm not completely sure that I'm pronouncing that correctly, at Curtin University in Perth, Australia. Uh, he's active in Moodle discussion groups, um, and today the Moodle community includes, and this is what the Moodle people say, about 37,000 sites with over 25 million users. Um, there are people all over the world, Moodle will work in a number of languages, who are working with Moodle, and they share the various things they do with Moodle at Moodle.org, and this is what Moodle.org looks like. Um, you can go into support and get answers to questions. Um, you can get discussion. You can get FAQs. Uh, this is where you would go if you wanted to download the software. Um, I elected not to go into a lot of the technical stuff about the software today, um, partly because here at this uh, website it will explain it. and. Um, You'd find that it's really very easy. Um, you can download Moodle and it will have pretty much everything it needs with it. It has to have Apache and SQL and a couple of other things to make Moodle work. But really, it has been very easy. Um, many schools, colleges, institutions, and organizations use Moodle to offer online learning. For example, um, here's the University of Washington Moodle site. Um, then we have, this is the University of Barcelona Moodle wow. site. Um, the American Library Association is using Moodle for some of its online learning, and of course, we are using Moodle. Um, we have just elected to uh, name our, um, our Moodle site in campus, and yeah, I did kind of, it was sort of a takeoff on NCAMPUS, <laughs> but I liked it. I thought NCAMPUS oh, actually yeah. worked very well. Um, this is a pretty standard um, skin for Moodle. Moodle can look a lot of different ways and still work the same way, but this is what we have right now. Um, we started Moodle last spring when we, um, or I, put one of the basic skills classes up on Moodle, the public service class. And instead of making it one big class, I turned it into four learning modules, uh, customer service, reference, readers advisory, and programming and outreach. Um, 
we are using it now for the next class that we'll be having, which is collection development. And uh, that class will um, include four modules again, and those are going to be collection management, policy writing, community, um, community knowledge, or writing a community profile, and um, intellectual freedom issues. So um, we're following the same basic uh, formula that we did the last time. We can gussy this up, and we're hoping to at some point kind of make it fancier, mm -hmm. but right now we have a pretty uh, plain vanilla. Uh, the first thing we have to do when we're on Moodle is to log in. Uh, that's up in the uh, upper right-hand corner. Um, you, you put in your username and your password. Um, today we're going to be special guest. Um, some courses do allow guest access. We have not, I have not yet set this up for guest access. Um, this was partly because I felt the people who were logged in as students and were taking the class kind of deserve their privacy. Um, at some point we may get a, uh, a sample class or a uh, uh, sort of a um, orientation class up. And I would like to do that, that then you could get guest access. But right now you have to have registered for the class uh, to get in. Um, so, and Campus, here was the customer service class, and this is the one we'll be showing you as an example of the classes. Um, when you log in, Moodle knows which classes you've registered for, and it will only show you, give you access to those classes. So we're registered for customer service, um, and uh, you see the Moodle, um, and we can contact it. Why do we want to do this online? Why would we want to do this instead of having an on-site class? Well, um, for one thing, we don't have to get everybody together and they don't have to travel. That was one of the big things. Um, you can study when and where you like. Uh, so if it's a nice day, you know, you can study outside. Um, taking the class does involve basically reading and writing. You are, instead of class lecture, you are going to get most of the material that you want to cover in class, you will be reading. Now I have made a real effort to try to make readings fairly short, fairly pithy, mm -hmm. um, and then you will be writing replies. So there is um, quite a bit of give and take. Uh, one of the things we like about Moodle is not only can we have give and take between a participant or student in the class, but we can have participation among the students. Um, this page shows you that uh, you go to the customer service, we click on customer service, we get into the customer service um, class page, and you see that the topics are uh, listed in the middle column. And um, we're going to zoom in and look at just one of the first topic, which is customer service in the library. Um, this has, first it has a reading. You want to read the five laws of library science. And when you click on this, here's the reading. So see, I wasn't fibbing. They really are short. <laughs> Not all of them are this short, but they're short. Um, then there's an assignment. And this assignment was the five laws and customer service. And so you go uh, to the assignment page, and it tells you what the assignment is. Um, this was the first assignment. What we wanted to do with this assignment was to get people kind of get their heads into the idea of thinking about customer service. And we wanted to um, see if we could get students kind of relating to one another a little bit. So this assignment was to discuss what Rankin-Athens Five Laws had to do with customer service and to make a posting to a forum. Now, the forums are one of the ways for students to relate. We also have chat rooms, which I have not used and probably won't use because that means that everyone would have to be online at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
the advantage to a forum or kind of a bulletin board is that you can go into it anytime during the time the forum is open and make a posting and other people then can go in post uh, comment on postings and we can get a nice discussion going but you don't have to all be in the same room at the same time um, so this is what the forum looked like the question is posted at the top and then the list of um, postings that people have made are much is much longer. You'll notice that one of the people here did put her picture in, and that's one of the things we'll get to, that you can have student pictures. Um, I wasn't sure I'd like this at first. <laughs> um, I'm not crazy about having my picture up places. Oh, then I shouldn't tell you that your picture is up in this session. <laughs> well, what, what can I say? Um, but I actually found that I liked this very much. Um, I felt that after all, one of the things you want to do in a class is kind of get to know the people who are taking the class. These are your peers. These are people who um, can really uh, help you out sometimes because they've done something that you'd like to do. Um, so these are good people to get to know. And I thought this was a nice thing that you could kind of get to know people by having um, the uh, student profiles. But here, our first assignment, we had a forum, we discussed something. I thought we had a pretty nice discussion. And um, you'll notice that Moodle always keeps us um, informed about where we are. Uh, I don't know if you saw, because they're very small, but um, next to all those assignments, there were little icons. And I, now, I've blown them up here, so they look kind of blurry. But the icons really will always tell you where you are and what you're doing. So there's a forum web page. Um, the, the forum icon will tell you that you're going to enter a forum. And that's not, I thought at first that was a little broadcast tower kind of sending out rays. Um, but it's not. It's two little faces facing, facing one another. Um, then you'll have, uh, for the readings, it will tell you if they're a web page or they're a PDF. Um, a lot of the readings that I created myself, I put in PDF format so that no matter what kind of software the user had, the student had, they'd be able to use the material. Um, we did, one of the things about Moodle that we liked uh, was that it really didn't take a lot of special stuff on the student end. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everyone can interact with Moodle. Um, so it works on PCs and Macs? It works on PCs, it works on Macs, it works whether you're using um, all the um, Microsoft products or not. Mm -hmm. um, and we thought that was probably a good idea. Oh, yeah. um, if you have an assignment, it always has this little hand with a piece of paper in it so you know it's an assignment. Um, there's even, there are tests in Moodle. Um, and they have their own icon. So we always have, we always know where we are because we can use uh, the icons. You'll also notice um, that, have I gotten ahead of myself here? Yeah. No, I haven't. You'll also notice that there is more on the screen than just this middle part with the, um, these are little notes from the instructor to the student, and then you have postings, and you have uh, readings, and you have assignments, and they are all listed here in the topics. But there's also stuff in the right-hand column and the left-hand column. Um, and in the right-hand column, they're telling you what's going on. So they'll tell you upcoming events. There's an assignment. Whoops, it's due today. <laughs> um, but it'll always tell you what the assignments are, so you know. Um, there's a calendar, and the calendar here has a couple of things on it. If I clicked on this, um, it would tell us that September's Library Card Sign-Up Month, and we put that on our calendar, oh. so we all know that. Um, and then the ninth is our assignment being due. So the calendar tells us stuff, and then it tells us that we can have global, group, course, or user events. 
Um, and the user, the student, does actually have control of these things. They can shut them and off and say, I don't want to see those things, which I think would be foolish, but you could do it. Um, there's also, it also tells you who's online. Um, when I captured this screen, I was online and our, um, our group for whom I created a student, Diana Prince, was online. I even gave Diana a little icon of her own. Um, and it tells me if I have messages. One of the things you can do in Moodle is send email messages to one another. Um, they'll get the message within Moodle, but they'll also get the message sent to the email address they've entered. Um, so it's easy to communicate with one another in Moodle. Then we ha also have things on the right hand side. Uh, there's a list of all the people and if we click on that we would get a list of all the participants in the class. Um, we could click and get a list of assignments. We could get um, a list of all the different forums because there are different forums. The forums can be dedicated to a particular use. So, for instance, we had the Ranganatha Discussion Forum. We had several other forums in here when we discussed things, and they were separate forums. You can have glossaries. I didn't use that. Um, but it is a, a something where uh, the whole class can compile and um, a list of terminology or things if they wanted to. We have quizzes, um, and we have the resources, which are the readings. Um, this, for instance, is a list of the students that are signed up. Um, and if you go, if you click on one of the profiles, here's our Diana Princess oh, profile. Was, yes, <laughs> I, that's who I chose to use as a uh, an icon for Diana. Um, I don't know if anybody if Diana Prince was actually maybe Wonder it was a little too subtle. That's Wonder Woman. I know Wonder Woman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But that's not her picture. That's no, that's her. not one. Well, I think she is a one oh, yes. actually. <laughs> but um, so we have a the, the librarian action action figure. It is the librarian action figure picture. picture. <laughs> um, you can edit your profile if you want to. Um, you can put it in your your interests. I felt that we were interested in truth, trust, justice, intellectual freedom, <laughs> the Dewey Decimal System, and reading. Um, so. You really can use Moodle um, to get to know one another. Um, Moodle will also allow for people to have blogs. Again, that's not something I've used, but we could if we thought it came up and it, it was working for us. Um, and then, uh, for instance, if we want to get a list of assignments, here was a list of the assignments we had in the customer service class. Um, this, the, the Five Laws in Customer Service was a forum we discussed. The Library Users Bill of Rights, people had to write a little thing about the, the Library Users Bill of Rights, tell what they thought were the most important things uh, in a user's Bill of Rights, and then upload a file. That's how you turn in an assignment. Um, you go to a page and you upload the file, which is very easy to do. It's clicking a button. Um, there were offline activities. Uh, custom, the cu customer needs um, was to talk about various kinds of customers, categories of customers, if you will, and what they might have special needs. Um, telephone features. This was another offline activity. This activity was actually about the idea that it's important to get the most out of your resources. So it's important to understand all the features on your telephone. It's important to understand your computers. It's mm -hmm. important to get your um, online um, databases and understand them because those are the resources you have. And uh, that's one of the things you can do to offer people good service and uh, have more resources yourself. So. That was the point of that assignment. This fall, we're going to have four modules again, as I said, uh, Intellectual Freedom and the Core Values of Librarianship. Um, that sounds, I think, deadly dull, <laughs> but it's turning out that it sounds dull, but it's really very interesting. You made it very interesting, yes. <laughs> um, collection Management, in which we talk about selection and acquisition 
and deacquisitioning, um, and taking care of our materials, physically taking care of our materials. The dreaded W word. Yes, we it is the <laughs> dreaded W. Um, but even weeding can kind of be fun because it helps, you know, you see the flowers better. Um, then we're going to have a module on library policies, why it's important to have policies and how to write policies. Um, and then the community and the library, because of course libraries serve their communities and we need to understand the community to understand what we need to give them. Um, so this is also known as Basic Skills Collection Development Online. Uh, registration for that is open right now. And um, so the current class is going on now that have that thing due today. That's the would have already had started. That that was already actually that was just a um, demo. Oh okay. <laughs> there isn't really a class going on right now. We're the previous currently, one was the public. Service. It was public okay. service. We're still uh, scheduling the basic skills classes um, one every six months. And there are four basic skills classes, so they're taking two years. There's a two-year cycle. Um, at some point, of course, you can see where this would go. Um, all of a sudden, when you have these classes online um, and you've made them smaller classes, it would be easier to schedule them more often. Yeah. And so that's one of the things we're working toward. Um, this class, as I said, the one coming up is collection development, and I am working very hard to get it done <laughs> so that we'll be ready to do it. It will be starting November 2nd, right after uh, NLA NEMA. Oh, gosh, yeah. But and they can register now. They actually. register now. We need for you to register. The class will be held online, and we will also be holding um, it on site, as we always have, in person in six locations around the state will be having it in Waterloo, Norfolk, Lexington, Hastings, Seward, and Alliance. Um, and all of those classes will be during November. Um, next spring, the class will be Organization of Materials, aka Cataloging. Um, I envision having that again on uh, in six places around the state. Probably not quite the same locations. We tend to move those locations around a little bit, but six locations around the state and online. And then the next fall will be um, public library administration. At that point, if all goes well, then we will have um, all the classes in modules and we can start talking about maybe we want to do this a little bit differently than we have done it in the past. Um, does anybody have any questions? And we can go live to Moodle if you want to see it. Um, it doesn't look different than the slides did, but we can see it live if you'd like. Does anybody have any questions? If you have a microphone, feel free to um, use that. Uh, or if you do not... Hi there! If you do not have a microphone, uh, type into the... Um, questions area and we'll be able to see those there and we have one here let me check here uh, how much training do you have to give students to use Moodle uh, someone at the commission here is asking how much training do you have to give students to use Moodle does it take much you know um, I tried to kind of explain as we went along um, this is how you upload a, a document, this is how you do this, but um, really you don't need a lot of training at all. Um, it turned out that we kind of just talked about how you did stuff as we went along and got two things, and it worked fine. Uh, Moodle's very good about um, making it very clear, as I said, where you are in the class. It makes it pretty clear what you need to do. Um, the navigation around Moodle, uh, it uses several different things. It, it has a, a, a navigation. I can show you 
and it jumps, but it also always has breadcrumbs. So you kind of always know where you are. So it's actually, really, I thought, very easy to use as a student. So it's pretty intuitive. Yeah. The bowl system. Um, it's like anything. You have to look at it first. You have to click on some buttons and see what happens. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, you didn't have to learn new skills. It's a lot of the same stuff you've been using elsewhere in your job. Oh, yeah. Or it it was life. really, it really, I thought was pretty intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, not hard to use. Um, Let's see, Laura, you have a question mark. Did you have a, um, a question? If you have a microphone, you can use that. If not, you can um, type into the questions section there. We can see. No? Okay. No problem. <clears throat> um, does anybody else have any other questions or comments or anything about Moodle, about using it, um, the system itself, how the commission's using it? Mm -hmm. Um, if you have a microphone, I've got everybody, except Amy, <laughs> um, unmuted. Um, or you can type into the questions section there. Show the basic skills announcement. Oh, sure, oh, we can show the basic the skills list. announcement. Yeah. Of the commission, of mm -hmm. the, okay. Um, the commission homepage. Yeah. Um, I think no, we just have the first one. one. Yeah. Yeah, but here's the announcement for what the ones that are coming up. Yeah. Um so you'd want to uh, go to the library training calendar and the best thing to do is to um, just keyword search on basic skills and see them all. Um, each of the uh, the online session runs from November 2nd through December I think 18th. Um, the um, on-site classes are at different um, different days of the week. They're all three sessions. So you would have to go three Tuesdays in a row or three Thursdays in a row or whatever. Um, yeah, for example, here, yeah, it tells you. And this is for the Hastings one. Yeah, you do need to go to all three classes if you sign up for one of the on-site sessions. And this is the registration, the online session was registration for the Moodle that yes, we just showed. Yes, that is for the class that's offered through Moodle. Um, I, I kind of think that what's important is the what's in the class. And that's one of the things I liked about Moodle is I felt Moodle wasn't going to get in the way of the material. Mm -hmm. um, that Moodle would be easy enough to use, that people could kind of, Oh yeah, you know, there's a little anxiety when you first get in there. That's just doing something new has a little anxiety attached to it. But you get used to it pretty fast, and then I think Moodle doesn't get in your way. It presents the material to you so that you can do what you need to do and not worry about the software. And that's what I thought was good about it. How many people did you have in the first one you did? The uh, we had 20. That was the class limit. Mm -hmm. um, we will probably, I uh, limited this class to 25 mm -hmm. this time. Um, it, so they're filling up, definitely. People are interested in oh, doing yeah. it this way. They're not too afraid. <laughs> no, they're yeah. filling up. People um, seem to, we did a, a class evaluation last time, and people didn't seem to have anything. Um, they had no real beef with Moodle. A <laughs> um, couple of things mm -hmm. I couple of assignments they weren't thrilled with, but they weren't, they weren't, I learned a great deal. Um, and that's, that always happens. Um, I was nervous 
about putting it all together the first time, but it worked pretty well. Um, I found it pretty easy to put the material in once I kind of got used to, oh yeah, this is how you do this. Um, as I said, there are a few things that we haven't used in Moodle that we might try, but I don't see the point in using something unless it's a good way to present the material. Um, I liked the forums because I felt it gave people a chance to discuss and to relate to one another, but didn't require them all to be in one place at one time or all logged in at the same time. Uh, which a chat room would. Um, I also thought that there were times when handing in a written assignment was um, appropriate. So, you know, you try to do what's the, the best way to cover the material. Um, any other questions? Questions, comments, anything? Well, this has been kind of short and sweet, but oh, I, you know what? I did whatever it takes. <laughs> it, it pretty much covered what I thought we needed to cover. Um, if you're interested in the classes and you have any questions, do let me know. Um, and uh, if you'd like to try Moodle. Um, I would suggest going ahead and downloading the software. If you do have questions about it or anything, give us a call. Um, uh, Diane has really helped a lot with some of the technical aspects mm -hmm. of Moodle. Um, but as I said, the Moodle community is also uh, very helpful. That's nice when you can have that. Yeah, it really is. So, nobody else anything has else? anything else? And you, oh, how, ah, this is, a, Laura wants to know, how often should we take these classes if we had them in the past, the basic skills classes in general? Like, okay, when are you supposed to retake them? We ones? really have required you to have, and once we, we have always said, and the requirement is, once you've had the basic skills class, we figure you've taken it. Um... If you want to take it again, you can. Um, I think probably if it's been, oh, you know, more than five years, um, or you have been out of the biz for a while, this would probably be a good thing. I think we do, there are some things that are sort of eternal in libraries, and so we'd probably be covering some things that you've done before. On the other hand, yeah, there's probably some new stuff too. Things change, new yeah. technologies come along, new, new yes. ideas. Yeah. Um, so um, I think that's kind of up to you. You would earn a continuing education credit for taking the classes, even if you already have fulfilled that basic skills requirement. And you can pick and choose, too, if just one of the basic of the yes, classes can. is something that you want a refresher on. You know, you're suddenly moving into the cataloging world. You weren't, yeah. hadn't been part of your job before. You might just take that one mm -hmm. um, and get a refresher on that. Yes. And this, of course, is one of the reasons we're talking about maybe um, making these into smaller modules eventually, mm -hmm. is that this would make it much easier for people to pick up one class if they kind of wanted a refresher. Um. Any classes other than basic skills being offered through Moodle? Right now, we are not. Right now, um, I don't. I, I think we're in a strange place between beta and full, <laughs> full on <laughs> Moodle. Um, the last time we did this was the first time, and we had to consider it really a trial. Mm -hmm. um, this time, I'm. I was pretty pleased with how it worked, and I think. We're going to continue with it, um, but it's taking me a little while. Um, putting your class together is is kind of a um, uh, intensive thing, and translating it from an in-person class to an yes. online class is not the 
easiest thing in the and, world. And you got to kind of rethink about how you, you present You really it. do have to rethink how you present the material. You want to present the material in a really interesting way. You want to make um, assignments and exercises, things that will really help people master the material. So you, you don't want a lot of busy work. Um, that, that actually does take some time. Um, I would think in the future we would be looking at more classes in Moodle, mm -hmm. just because Moodle is a pretty efficient way of delivering material. Um, on the other hand, for a one-shot class um, like this, and that's in no way putting down a class that we offer a single time, um, it's just that it might not be worth putting that in Moodle. It might be a little bit more difficult to put it in Moodle than it would be worth. But a class that you think you're going to offer multiple times, yeah, we'll see more of those in Moodle. Something to keep experimenting with, yes. obviously. And, and more than you ever them. wanted to know, by the way. <laughs> so anything else? Anything else? Well, if there's nothing else, I think we can wrap it up. Well, thank good. you. Yeah. Thank you for spending some of your Wednesday morning with us. Um, I hope this answered some of your questions, and um, I hope we'll see you here at Encompass again soon. Yeah. Thanks. And if you do have any more things you want to know about Boodle, you have to think of after the fact, of course, you've got Laura's contact info here. Yeah. Just give, her give a me buzz. a call. <laughs> thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.